let's get back to that analysis that we were just uh, discussing. Um, now, if you think back to um, a more generic case where um, number is greater than p squared, we can also look at the case where number is less than p squared, but maybe it's not as interesting as when the number is greater than p squared. Um, how would you change the algorithm if you were to take this, see that it has this its strength is that it does lots of things in a sequential way, right? which is if you look back to the earlier slides uh, we were talking about when you design, you try to keep things as sequential as possible. Right? You try to remove communication, remove synchronization. So now instead of n or p squared elements, we have many times p squared elements. You could do simulation, right, like before. Uh, there are two scenarios. Initially, we may start with n by p number of elements, which is which will be greater than p, okay? or we can start with p number of elements, but more than n by p number of chunks, okay? and then uh, the merged elements will be more than. Uh, but than but you would ideally like if you want to keep things local, then which of those two would you choose? Later, Later one, right? You you want to divide it into p work. Everybody does it sequentially, right? So that's what we are going to do. We are going to say divide L1. Again, every p pth element goes to um, a given processor. So 0, p minus 1, 2, p minus 1, etc. are going to processor 0. But now processor is getting much more than p. Fine. It still is going to get n over p. It's going to uh, n over p from here, n over p from here. It's going to merge it sequentially. Um, and then we're going to do something about the rest. The element get to again, uh, and this is again, uh, p plus one is, is incorrect, to within p positions of, and, and this requires a little bit of proving, which I'm not going to do, but essentially the same logic. You start with that proof and, and you uh, see that this is still true. So now if we have said that after this process, there are chunks uh, of P that we form, right? Every, because every element is within P of each other, uh, within P of its final rank position. And each of these P is sorted. You still have to do the same thing as before, right? You take blocks of P, merge it, blocks of P, merge it, blocks of P, merge it. Which is excellent. Because you, you keep blocks of P uh, that you're taking can be done in one place where somebody else is doing another block of P and merging it. Right? Now there are many more than n by P blocks though. That is uh, what is different. The, the differences are in point number two or, or step number two in that, although it's written exactly the same, the, the, the text is exactly the same, um, but now you're getting the size of each uh, list, sublist to become bigger. The other two differences are here, right? So once you get done with that pair, zero and one, you go and do P squared, uh, a P squared element, right? There are P blocks, P blocks, or, or rather p pairs that you did, right? Zero and one, two and three, uh, p minus, uh, two p minus two and two p minus one. And then somebody is going to do the next two. Right? So everybody was busy doing these p pairs, then they go and do the next p pairs. Then they could go do the next p pairs, right? So it still remains sequential. It's just that uh, it's, that thing is happening in a loop. Merge pairs of p things in a loop. And uh, again, 
for the next step you do the same thing right how does the time change so the changes are at those three places saying that our n over b has increased size of subject is increased. size of yes increased. and on the we are saying that first b pairs are sorted and then pointer shifts to p squared p squared so, element p squared element so we are moving like this so ultimately we have first p processes has acted upon the first p things so it is similar to the first case only something like we are looping now pp so exactly the subless sides remains the same exactly for each e iteration so this size that was p ultimately and, and it's doing sequential work right you you're, you're so seeing one iteration the subless size remains the same yes yes p after all iterations are over then my whole subless no no subless size remains p right because uh, i think it it it's useful to look at what's happening after first step suppose you had many more processors doesn't matter how you merge them right the point is that if you have blocks of p if you do every pf you assign them to one processor you assign them to 100 processors you assign them to whatever number of processors after they merge these every pf thing uh, of their thing uh, of of their sublist then elements are going to be within p of each other right basically the same argument as before which means that now if you form blocks of p right and take another pair with another p elements next to it and had to merge it after if you do it with the right and the left once then the entire thing will be sorted now if you look at so th that's what needs to be done now who does what accounting needs to be done to figure out the the time so you you are doing um one pair at one processor at a time right how many pairs are there total pairs because there is only p in each block n by p pairs n by p pairs right so p pairs are going to do the first of them or p pairs are being done by p processors first then another p pairs another p pairs right until all are covered right so how long does this take n by p precisely uh, because it's sequential as before um you do amount the work done is proportional to the number of elements you are handling so it might be into number of iterations uh, that's exactly what i was just explaining because each is not n by p each is p right so every processor another way to think to argue this is every processor is handling one of them one pair right one pair and every element is being handled by one processor right and you do only amount of work that's proportional to the, to the elements given to you so of course the total work is done by is proportional to the number of elements it's being handled by only one okay so the time remains n by p it turns out that it is a little hard to keep the time the same for this algorithm if you make the number of processors bigger then um square root of n okay so this algorithm is inherently less parallel which shouldn't come as a surprise right it's trying to keep things sequential um all right then how do you use this for sorting and how long will it take again let's keep in the same framework where we are talking about p processors and the amount of time taken with p processors with the known p processors um suppose for the time being again we take the same uh, argument that there are 
p squared elements to sort. Actually, in this case, we don't need to worry about it. n by p log p. It is n by p log p. Uh, but how? Why? Log p stages n. Log p stages and every stage takes n by log p. Why does every stage take n by p log p time? Because the first stage, if I have n by p time. Why? The first, from leaf level to the first level, I have two processes and two n by p chunks. So essentially, the, the list size doubles, and, number of and the number of processors handling that list size also doubles. doubles. So it's going to take the same amount of time. So each one is going to take n over p, which is uh, demonstrated here. Um, and the total time will be n by p log, log of p. But of course, the original initial sorting was also needed, the local sorting. Right? Because we can merge only after the, the, the uh, lists are sorted, individual lists are sorted. And so that will take n by p log n by p, which is n log n over p. OK. Um, now we are going to talk about, we're going to come back to the mode of work time scheduling and see what it takes. Again, the algorithm itself is not my main focus. Um, it is not something you would necessarily implement. It is uh, less than simple. However, the technique that it uh, uses is an important technique. Uh, it uses uh, pipelining in a very efficient way. Um, and so just so you learn that technique, I'm going to talk about this algorithm. Okay. So this is log n time sorting. And it is based on the idea of C cover merging. Okay. Uh, which means that I am going to merge two lists given some prior information about the lists. Okay, prior information is given in the form of a cover, a third list. This third list is called a C cover. If the third list, the, every, the, the idea of cover is that this list is, the, the cover itself has fewer elements than the original list. Okay. And the list, the cover is distributed evenly to the original list. For example, I can say, if I take every fourth element of the list, of a given list, that forms a four cover. Fourth is in it, it, it's sorted version. Sorted version, yes. The cover is for a sorted list. Um, I think it should, I should add that here. Um, so, of, uh, you can define a C cover. Uh, X is a C cover of A. If between any, any two elements of X, there are at most C elements of A. Okay. Similarly, it is a C cover of B. If between two, any two elements of X, there are C elements of B. Okay. So, C cover is essentially giving you some sampling of the original. It, it tells you something about the original. For example, if I gave you the it's a given element's location in the C cover, then you can find it in the original list by looking at at most C more elements, right? Because if I know that it's between these two elements in the cover list, and between these two there are only four more, then this element has to be between among those four more. Okay. Um, all right. So the, the idea of cover is a simple enough definition. It's clear, right? Because it's important to the rest of the algorithm. So what are the scenarios when such a cover would already be there? We will build this cover. This, this cover is not, not assumed. Like by tonic, we first make it. Tonic. Exactly. Yeah. We'll, we'll build the cover and then we use the cover for Mojo. Yeah, this is not under assumption of somebody giving you a C cover. If you had a C cover, 
um, let's say X it was C cover for both A and B, okay, which is what we are starting to merge. Okay? The input is a list A and a list B, and I happen to get a cover X, which is C cover for both A and B, which means that uh, for every element of X, uh, no, I, I get the C cover, not just C cover, I also get some further piece of information, which is rank of the elements of the cover in the original list, okay? So I know where to find the third element of my cover in A and in B, and the fourth element and the fifth element. Given that, looks like you, you, you've been given a lot of information. Given that information, you can find rank of A in B, and similarly rank of B in A in constant time. How do you think? A cover. One, two, three, four, and cover is, One, two, three, four is A. Is A. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you're talking, about, you have to choose a C. So if you say two cover, then it can be 1, 3, 5, 10. It doesn't have to be the elements of A. It just needs to have the property that between any two elements of the cover, there is a fixed, there's only two more elements of it. If it is a two cover. We have the cover X, the middle uh, vector, and elements A, uh, the, the vectors A and B, and we are trying to find the uh, rank of A in B and the rank of B in A. What we are given is rank of X in A and B, which means those lines that you are seeing going across are known. Right? So, for example, uh, if I say X i and X uh, X i minus one and X i, between them there are at most C more things in A as well as B, and I know the rank of X i. So, X i lies between um, a R I and it, the element to its right. The, the greatest element less than or equal to X I is A R I. Similarly, on the B, it's B T I. I know. R1 and R2? I mean, what's the gap? How many elements the element between the two? So, here, here the, this, is, uh, this is a C cover, doesn't necessarily mean that every uh, two pairs will have exactly four. And so it's some uh, at most four, yeah. Uh, so these are just some indexes, variables. Uh, uh, R1 can be, uh, it has to be less than C, can be anything. Um, okay, so now if I give you an element in X, in A, right, small a, um, I have space here, I can make this diagram bigger, I guess. Um, and we want to find its rank in B. How can you find it in order one? C order C steps. How? All the elements in B. Yes. Xi minus one can give you where okay. it's le le lesser bound to check. But A is so A Xi minus one. We know its position in both A and B. And it's shown by those two arrows, which means anything to the left of the, those arrow heads are less than xi, xi minus one. Xi minus one is the location. That arrow is where it is found. So these two lists are individual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all the elements. Left steps would mean the constant. We are assuming C is constant. We are assuming C is constant. Yes. And so A is definitely all the elements. Um, okay. Somebody give me a formal argument for why all the elements uh, before that arrowhead coming from A are less than A. Between x i minus one. A is greater than x i minus one. And all those things are less than x i minus one. Right. Similarly. Um, it uh, cannot be outside of this block. Why? Similar reason. Exactly. And so it has to be somewhere in this block. 
And we know there are only C elements in any block at most. So in C more steps, we can find the rank of A. Okay. So officially, the rank of A in B is rank of x i minus 1 in B plus rank of A in BR. And, and if we had n processors for every element of A, then in order n work, we would have find all, found all ranks. One, order one time, because they are all independent of each other. Order one time, order n work, we can find the entire rank. All right. Now, so that's just the preliminaries. Now we understand that if somebody gave us a cover with the ranks, we are done. Not much more to do. But where are these covers coming from? Let's uh, look at a few things uh, just out of the blue, it may seem. And then in the back of the mind, there is this merge tree, right? When, when you do merge sort, what do you do? You have one element at the leaf, you merge pairs, you get sizes of two, then you merge pairs again, you get sizes of four, you keep merging until you get size of n, or if you say n and n, then at the end it's 2n, whatever, order n. We'll keep that tree in mind, because this is going to speed up the same tree. Um, it is going to run in stages. The stage is not necessarily the level of the tree. Um, in fact, it is not the level of the tree, but it is related to the level of the tree. Um, and every element of this node, uh, you know, every node of this tree maintains a list. Right? It merges the children and generates the merge list. Right? And the root merges its two children's uh, sublists and gets the final list. Right? So the, the same principle still is going to apply, except you will merge it many times. It's not just that you will merge when your chance comes, when all of your uh, children have, or both of your children have established their list and their list, then you merge them. Because right? that's where the time was being spent. Log and levels were needed. Each merge we, we said we can do in log log and time. Uh, but this level had to wait for that level. And if we cannot do merges in order one, then this entire process can never be done in order log n. So we want to do this entire process in log n without the need for having merges being done in order one. And, and the lower bound is um, on merges is log log n. So you couldn't even do it in order one. All right, so continuing with definitions, we'll say that uh, there are these stages and the list for node i has a subscript which says its value at a given stage, right? So when I say L0 of i, that means at the beginning, at stage zero. Stage can be thought of as steps, right? Just that steps is more generic. We'll talk about specific stages. And so we're using a, a kind of a non-regular term so that whenever I say stage, it's very clear what I mean. So L0 of i for every node that's a leaf node is one of the elements, just like in the regular merge tree. And for everybody else, L0 is um, nothing, null list. OK? We're still going to go through the levels, which means there will be log n involved. But we are not going to wait for the entire merge of the children to happen to generate the merge list for a given node. OK? That's how. Um, after order one time, you can start the process of the next stage, even without having the full results of the previous stage. Okay. As a side note, this procedure works for not just a complete binary tree, any proper tree works, which means in other contexts, when you have 
a proper binary tree in your algorithm, the same process can still be applied. Okay, some more definitions. Uh, th these are less of definitions now, uh, but uh, of some properties. So the levels of the tree are activated by stage. Right? So at zeroth stage, the leaf node becomes active, first stage, the next level, the next stage, the next level. And after log n stages, the root becomes active, just like it happens in the merge tree, except um, they remain active, they continue to work. And a node at a height uh, of, well, I've used the variable height, so I'll uh, keep saying that. Uh, if the node's height from the leaf level, uh, with leaf's height being zero, um, is n, uh, no, this, as I said, if height is height, then, and at after h height stages, that node is going to become active. It's going to remain active for up to three height stages. Right? So it's not that all the nodes remain active all the time after becoming active. Which means the root is going to become inactive after three log n stages. Which means that if we are able to manage each stage, root of the merge tree. It will be active only once. No, no, that's exactly what this slide is saying. That you remain active for stage, you become active at stage equal to your height. Right? There is a global counter for stage. And you become active at stage equal to your height and you remain active until your, the stage is equal to three times your height. So, but number of stages, total number of stages is log n. It's not log n. It's more than one. In fact, it is three log n. Because after root becomes inactive, there is nothing much to do. Um, and the basic uh, idea is that at every stage, you instead of taking your left and the right child and merging their lists, you simply take some of your left child's list, some of your right child's list and merge only that. Okay. So you sample your left and the right child because there is just too many elements to, to handle. Height is depth. Height is depth. From the leaf, height of the node. So height is always from the ground. Um, and the definition of sample is also out of the blue. Um, if you're, you're, you're active until three times your height, right? Until that time, your sample is every fourth element. Okay. After that, the next step, your sample will be every second element. Now, your sample means your parent is taking your sample. And you have become inactive at that point. So your pair, but your parent will remain active for how many more steps? Three more steps, right? It's n plus one, h plus one, so three h plus three. So for those three steps, uh, it has to figure out your samples. And so after you have become inactive, your sample becomes every other element. And the next time it, your sample becomes every element. So if you, now you have become the full list that you expect from your children, then you will and, and the entire list is being taken by the parent, right? Parent is going to generate a full list at the 3n plus first stage. 3n plus uh, 3 height, 3 your height plus 3 stage. That's when the parent will have generated all of the list that belongs to that subtree. Okay. Um, we have to stop here.
but you can probably see now the underlying logic or mix of merge merge sorting or merge merge sorting it is unsorted uh sorry it is unsorted data original data on the leaves is unsorted so what is hap happening here okay. you you say that we take some of the elements yeah so, and the sum of the elements is going to become the cover that is a right? that will be critical part. that would be critical yeah we, we have a lot to talk about but uh, right now we are going to have a quiz but basically the the intuition should now start to develop in that in one step you should be able to take the sample and merge the sample using the sample you took the last time so the sample you took the last time was some indication of what your samples are now so the sample you used last time is going to be a cover for the next set of samples so using that cover you're going to be able to generate the new merge list which is not the full merge list just a merge list of the samples in constant time okay but you will be active for certain number of stages each time more samples come from your children you keep merge building your merge list to be bigger and bigger based on the previous cover and you after when you become inactive at the last step before that you have generated the sorted list of all the elements in your subtree and this because every stage is order 1 and there are three log n stages will be done in log n time the pattern of book is not very similar to the optimal which most that we have done earlier also we were finding the chance of log n size in there very different because there's there's you'll see Let's I mean, discuss. Just make it recursive. Uh, we say, for example, can every log n element of the file. Now I do the same thing on this. For example, more fun. Yeah, more course too. I solve the courses problem first, then add more elements, and then add more elements, and then add. But that's what you're doing here, right? You're kind of merging. You're being ultimately your goal is to merge your left and the right half, right? So. when there you already have the full list here you you didn't have the full list you are building the full list as your ch children are building it okay um limited to the number of parents parent sample number of samples i mean you're saying in a particular uh, height is active for many things here by then all the element from the child have to come to not just for three stages three stages after its children have become inactive right it's height two three times height right so the the root is active from log n to three log n root is active for a very long okay um so uh, just so we are at the same page with in terms of quizzes we've got um six quizzes so far in addition to the quiz that was uh, the minor so to speak or the minor that was the quiz okay um so uh, let me just quickly go through so you are reminded of what sir uh, one question uh, yeah which was more powerful they are equally powerful sorry they are equally powerful equally powerful in terms of computer computable whatever you can compute in one you can compute in the other because they simulate each other we were they talking about generating a, a log n time question yeah. yes so you see the first step is you sort the odd indices and next the even indices and then you start dropping uh, from the even first i mean second position. second position so but i think we should we must a point that in the first step you need to shuffle all the alternate we need to do a compare machine of in the first step need to alternate elements Well, you can ensure that the lower element comes out in the first position. If you do that, it is odd. Well, the the lowest two elements are on the two positions. So how do you ensure? Because both of them are sorted. So what you sort it the even and odd, and then you start. No, no, the, the L one and L two are sorted. 
We are only merging things. We are not sorting even and odd anything. Okay. Left is sorted, right is sorted. Okay. We merge the odds. We merge the evens, okay. right? And but we know that the the leftmost will be in the in the first here and the first here. And if we merge the two odds, then where is the minimum come to? You just take an arbitrary sequence and then we actually find the sort. No. It's merging. Right? It's a step of the merge sort, for example. So it's not an arbitrary sequence. If you take an arbitrary sequence and simply compare the odd ones and, and sort them in, in the proper place, you're guaranteed nothing at the end of it. It is a merge, which means merge of something. If you take two arbitrary sequences, you can merge it in order one time. Assuming that you are supposed to create an arbitrary sequence. If you are supposed to sort it, then you can't do it in anything better than log n time. Because sorting takes log n time. Alright, so back to um, this specific type of pipeline merging, where we were still looking at the same merge tree, where at the leaves are all the elements. And you take pairs, merge them, pairs of pairs, merge them, and until you reach the root, at which time you have merged all of them. Um, you do this in set of stages, right? So these are S stages, or, or let's say log of the number of nodes stages. But a node activates in the same way that the original algorithm activated them. Right? In the original algorithm, the first stage leaf is active, the next stage the next level is active and after log n stages the root is active and then nobody is active. Here they do activate themselves in the same order but the deactivation does not happen immediately after a stage but it happens at three times its height. Okay. So, what in the original algorithm? Uh, the same processors used to uh, do the let us say i stage and the same processor is to do the i plus one x stage. Right. So the processors were busy all the time. So why do we? But they, they needed to uh, sync. That's why we. We are not talking about sync per se because this is PDAM model we are considering. Right. So it's so it's already already synced. So what's the problem with the the regular merge tree? How long did it take? But the, the processors were busy all the time and they were not doing any redundant work. So they, the see, the, the thing is that it, they were not quite busy, not busy enough. Right? At the, we have talked about various flavors of merging. Bottom line is that at the bottom level, you have n processors doing order n things, but then you have to do smaller number of merges, right? the tree sizes have become, the, the node sizes have become bigger, but smaller number of merges. right? And so multiple processors are involved in doing smaller number of merges. And at the top level, every processor is involved in a single merge. Right? How do you do that efficiently it was not quite totally clear, although we have looked at a couple of examples. All of them ended up taking optimal work but the time spent was too long. Okay. Here we want to perform the sorting such that it can be done in log n time. It's, it's more of an academic exercise, but it's more, as I said, to understand how this algorithm proceeds. So you can apply it at other places also. Not particularly to learn how to do log n sorting. Okay. All right. So that was one important aspect of this, that you remain active, right? You keep doing some more work for a little while longer, okay? Um, and the second was that you don't get, as in the original uh, algorithm, you take your entire uh, results produced by the children and merge the entire list to produce your output, right? then you are done. Here you do that in phases, instead of saying let me take all my children 
let's take just a sampling of my children and merge them and then merge the remaining samples but not all the remaining samples uh, be, uh, keep adding to the samples you have merged a little bit at a time such that the previous merge helps you in doing the next merge very quickly okay and uh, we defined um, this sampling business where a uh, sample of uh, a given node in the merge tree uh, at stage s is given by um, either every fourth element or every second element or every element. Okay. It is every fourth element most of the time until you are at the uh, full height, right? If the or, or full activity period, a node, node n remains active from height of n to height of n times 3. So, until that period, until it is height of n times 3, every fourth element of the node is going to get uh, promoted up for merging. One step later, every second element gets promoted up. Promoted up. Two steps later, every element gets promoted. At that point, if all of your elements, all of your subtree, all the children, or all the, the leaves in your subtree have reached you, then you have promoted all of them. So one step later, all the leaves have reached your parent. And so if your siblings, all the siblings' leaves have also reached the parent, then the parents' leaves have reached the parent. All right, so here is uh, an example. Uh, we've got a note with two children, um, which so far have uh, generated uh, some elements. Um, we take the sample of the left and the right and we merge them. Okay. Um, the left and the right elements were not all the elements necessarily in their subtree. Just like you now don't have all the elements in your subtree. You have only one fourth of the element that your left gave you and one fourth that your right or one fourth that the left had and one fourth that the right had. Okay. The left itself may have had uh, many fewer. Right? Uh, for example, the left may have sampled itself from its child. Um, which is much more dense. Okay, so as you reach up the tree, the, as many levels are as are active at a given time, the bottommost level that is still active, which is going to turn inactive in the next uh, step, next stage, has everything. You still have to prove these things, and then we'll we'll. Uh, at least intuitively talk about why that is. Um, so at the bottom most level every element has been received, the next element every second has been received, at the next every fourth has been received and then onwards every fourth, fourth of fourth of fourth of fourth. Right? So it is a really sparse set at the top. Okay. Um, so on activation, a node is going to merge um, the sample of its children right? and at the activation time, its children's sample is every fourth, just by the rule uh, we talked about earlier. And when children deactivates, right, at that time it has received all of its, it would have received all of its children and the next step, every alternate will come in and the following step, all the step, all, all the children will come in for merger at the parent. Okay. So at the end of it, you will have merged everything that you would have merged in a regular merge tree. You would have merged it in several stages. You would have merged just a subset of it, then a bit more, then a bit more, then a bit more, ultimately having received all of it. Okay. All right. Let's look at the analysis. Um, and, and most of these statements I have already made uh, along the way. Every node becomes full, full meaning all of its subtree, 
all the leaves in its subtree have re uh, reached there. At the stage that is thrice its height, which is the last time it's going to be active. So just before it deactivates, it makes sure that it is complete. It has done what the original merge tree would have done. Okay. How would you prove that? Suppose I said do it by induction. <laughs> leaf level is complete, right? At when you start with zero, leaf level has everything that it's ever going to have. What about a general level? Assume that your child is complete. Three steps later, you are going to deactivate. You have to remember. In three steps, are you going to go to merge all your children? Yes, right. Because once at the at the stage your child became in, inactive, next step you'll be taking every alternate. The second step you'll be taking every one of them, right? And you are active for three more stages. So when you take every one of them, the final stage when you do the merging, the third stage, you'll have merged all the elements that your children had at, at three steps earlier. So three steps later you are going to have all your children because you are you're getting every element from the left and every element from the right. Okay. Um, and, and many of these things can be done on induction. The other is the number of elements at a node keeps doubling. Okay. Approximately, this is a slight boundary condition. Right. So L is the list of elements at node n at stage s plus 1 sub s plus 1 says that and it is uh, less than equal to twice of what its value was in the previous stage same node plus 4. Again you can prove it by induction. You just have to look at all the three stages. You are sampling every fourth, every second or every, every one of them. In all cases you will be doubling. You sample? Every fourth for quite some time. Quite some time. During that time, your child is doubling. Your child is uh, also sampling every fourth for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. So by induction, your child would have been doubling. Yes, and yes, and yes. So right, right. Um, the third statement, and these are all basically lemmas that you would be proving, and uh, I'm not formally proving them. Uh, the number of elements in active nodes is big O of n, um, meaning that if you take up all the active nodes, add it together, there is only that many elements to be worked on. So all the active nodes working together are only doing big O of n work. Okay. Although that many nodes are active at the same time, if you add up all the elements that they have, it's only order n. Okay. Um, and this needs a little bit of uh, more uh, construction to, to prove it. Uh, basically, you would uh, say that levels s by 3 to s, uh, what is the number of nodes, right? And then you'll say, at s by 3, you're going to become full because that's when your height, uh, stage by 3 is what, when, what your height is. Right? Because at stage equal to thrice your height, you became inactive. So uh, if your height is h, at s by 3, you became inactive. And so you see that, and what happens at level s by 3? Uh, and then levels above, uh, what happens? Again, it's just a hand wavy proof. I don't intend to go into the detail of the proof. Um, I'll point you to the paper um, that this comes from uh, to get more detail on the proof. I'll, I'll post it online. Um, but you can also go work it out. It's, it's not a hard proof uh, once you understand. Uh, or or you, you, if you simply focus on the main thing, just keep adding the number of uh, elements at each of these active stages or active levels. Um, 
Now, here are, here are the more important ones. It's a sample of a given node, right? meaning sample of its lists, of its list. At stage S is a four cover for its sample at the next stage. Right? It's not too hard to see, because right? you're going to get uh, at, at most four more things added in, right? uh, in, in any of the stages. Um, and the other thing is that for every stage after your height, meaning when you have become active, um, your list is a four cover, your list, the parent's list is a four cover of the sample of the left child and the sample of the right child. Again, little bit of maths will uh, get you to there. Okay, just counting, it's a counting argument. Which means that I um, have a list and I'm going to generate the sample of my left, generate the sample of my right and merge it. That's my next step. I already have an old list and I'm creating a new list by taking sample of my left, sample of my right and merging it. But if my old list itself is a cover for the two things I want to merge, then I can merge in order one time, right? That was the thing we talked about last class. If you have a C cover available for two lists, um, and we know the rank, which I haven't told you yet about. If you know the rank of the C cover in both A and B, then we can find the rank of A and B and rank of B and A, which means we have merged the two in order one time. Order C time, assuming C is one, here C is four. So in four steps. Okay, so what will the algorithm become? At any stage, I have the previous list, which in the beginning is null. I am going to get a sampling of my left and the sampling of my right. And the previous list is going to help me merge the two in order one time. Because previous list is a cover for both of them. Because previous list actually came from the previous samples of the same thing. The new samples will just be among them. More, more samples among the old, older ones that we took. Okay. Um, so how the sample sport will be great. Yes. I mean, if I take, let's say, I have two children right now, and I uh, take their samples in current stage, and I merge them together using the previous thing. Now, in the next stage, I take new samples. So these new samples won't be. I mean, they will be completely new. No, 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 no. They'll have. So if you go back to this picture, um, and we look at the samples. Suppose the next time more things come in, right? meaning, meaning the, those gaps that you see in the blue list get filled with, let's say one more thing comes in or two more things come in, depending on the stage. Then every fourth becomes different. Element. Not necessarily. Right? Suppose one more thing comes in. Then now these will remain, but there's one element coming in between the, the old samples also. The old samples still remain the samples, are still in the sample set. They have to be there to make it order one. Exactly. And the new samples are simply in between the old samples. Right? You had a question? Sir, the new samples are the C cover for the lower ones? Or the lower ones are having C cover for that one? Both of them. Um, but the ma main thing you want is, because your goal is to take the sample here, take the sample here and merge it. Which means, and, and do it fast, right? And do it fast means order one. Which means if you give me a C cover for the samples, I'm done, right? And my previous list is a four cover of the samples. But C cover of the samples will be again some samples from the previous list. No, C co it is a sample from the previous stage, but it's my list that I generated the previous uh, stage. So it, it's with me. 
I simply know that that is going to be a C cover for the new set of samples. So all I have to do the next stage is take the samples, merge them using the, my previous list and replace the previous list. Okay. And next step will do the same thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, we are to merge, what do we need? We need a cover, but we also need the cover's rank, right? Cover's rank in both. How do you get the cover's rank in both? Um, so, we want to find the rank of uh, the new sample in my left child. Uh, in the other child samples and the rank of the new samples in my right child in the left child samples, right? So those are the two things I'm going to need. Rank of sample S left and, and, and uh, sample S right. Left meaning left child, right meaning right child. Sample means sample under uh, sub S, we already know what that means, okay? Um, how do I find the rank of each of these samples in or the other way around, rank of my previous list in each of these samples. Knowing that previous list was a merger of the previous samples, And the new samples are just more things among the old samples. Seems doable, right? And this is where you are going to use the fact that the list that we generate is a cover for the samples. Okay, that's something that was one of the lemmas in the previous slide. And because it's a four cover of the samples, we know that the new samples, the, the old list uh, can only have four new samples in between every, every consecutive element. Okay, so that uh, can be done. Um, now, how do you find the rank of the list in the new samples? Right. So the previous statement says that uh, to to find those ranks, you are going to use the rank ls of sample left and uh, rank ls in the sample right. How do you compute ls of sample left? By going to the previous stage because we know it was a sample, it, it was a sample four cover of the previous stage. So to find the rank of LS in the new sample, I'm going to find the rank of LS in the old sample and the rank of old sample in the new sample. Um, sorry, when I have merged the two, can you please figure out that uh, Okay. So here we got the merge thing. Say, I think I have a blue sample between two red samples, and in my no that, that, that's not necessarily there. true. Not necessarily, true, but I, I I just there may be two consecutive blues. Between yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just a merger of blues and no, and reds, maybe. and in fact, we are not even interested in what is how many reds are between blue samples. We are interested in figuring out where this blue lies in this. In the red, in the in the merge list, which we found out, right? Because we, when in the previous stage, what were we doing? We were trying to figure out where do all of these blues go there, and where of all the reds go there. So we found that out in the previous. When we merged, we figured out where the blue ones went and where the red ones went. But in the new list, if we figure out where is this blue lies between which two reds, then that's what we have to find out. But we'll do it in in kind of indirect way. We'll do it in two steps. Right. We'll, we'll say, we'll, we know 
where the new blues are among the old blues and we know where the old blues are among the merge lists right so that's how we'll figure out where the new blues are going to be in the in the merge list or vice versa it's really the same thing okay so can you explain again how will you merge the first time you get alternate port for um, then you don't have to see the word. what is going to happen the first time only one, more element. only one element will come there's nothing to do right? so first three steps nothing happens right? in the beginning zeroth level you say okay i've got one that so my the parent is merging the first time it's two types yeah sample. So, let us see what happens. At the beginning, uh, the leaves have one element each. What does the parent say? Give me every fourth and it gets nothing because there is no every fourth. Then it is uh, next time it says give me every fourth. No, next time it says give me every second, still does not get anything. Next time it says give me every one of them, it gets one. Right? Then it is going to generate one merge, but in the meantime, when it gets two of them, its parent is saying give me every fourth. And it doesn't have it, so it's going to ultimately it's going to give you one as soon as it gets up, gets four elements. Right? As soon as your child gets four, you give you one to the parent, and so one merging one and one is constant time. And then you start to build on top of it. But or uh, the mostly we are considering here is starts with uh, first we do a local. Uh, no, 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 no. So we start with single. Element. This is the full complete merge tree this is using whatever number of processors you need right regular pram algorithm we are not talking about knowing p separately right where we had a slightly different type of analysis this is back to the old time work uh, framework okay all right um, so that's what this picture is showing you have to generate uh, the ranks of uh, the red samples and the blue samples and the blue samples and the red samples and uh, you are going and you know where the previous list has come from and you know the previous list came from the old samples. So, uh, you can you already know where to locate them in the previous list as you merged it. Um, how long and in fact, I am out of time also, uh, but let me finish this. Um, how long does it take? Well, probably it will take time. Let me stop.